My name is Kaushik Rajasekhar. I am a professor in the University of Texas at Dallas. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the power electronics for electric and hybrid vehicles. In the last lecture, we discussed the architecture and also some of the issues related to the electric and hybrid vehicles. Now, we will look at the power electronics. So, what is power electronics? It is the conversion and control of electric power using power semiconductor devices. Power electronics can be used in different modes. It can be a rectification, that is conversion of AC to DC, inversion, that is conversion of DC to AC of variable frequency, variable voltage, cycloconversion or cycloconverters. They convert AC to AC of fixed frequency or as matrix converters as variable frequency. AC control, in this case, AC voltage of certain value to another AC voltage of another value at the same frequency. DC control is DC to DC conversion. It can be a step up DC DC converter that is called a boost converter or a step down DC DC converter or a buck converter. The power semiconductor devices in all these applications are used as switches. In electric and hybrid vehicles, it is mainly DC-DC converter and inverter are used. In most of the vehicles, the DC-DC converter converts the high voltage battery to voltage of the vehicle that is required. In this case, mostly it is 12 volts. That is, if you have a 300 volts battery in a vehicle, it has to convert into vehicle 12 volts, which is used for all the accessory loads. The inverter converts the DC voltage of the battery to variable voltage and variable frequency AC to control the propulsion motor. So there is an increasing demand for the following items in power electronics related to automotive systems. We need higher current density, higher power density, high density interconnects, high thermal conductivity, high reliability, ability to withstand harsh environment. And with all these requirements, we also want the cost to be very low. Why do we need all these high power density and high current density systems? Because there is limited amount of space available in the automobiles to mount all the power conversion and the associated electronics and even the electric motors and everything they have to be fit within a compartment of a vehicle or under the hood or in the trunk wherever they need to go. In addition, in, hy in hybrid vehicles and also in electric vehicles, we have to have a battery that provides the propulsion power. So we need to find a space for the battery also. So typical motor control system for a hybrid electric vehicle powertrain, that is the diagram illustrates how the power electronics is put together in a hybrid vehicle. In lecture one, we discuss that in EVs and series hybrid vehicles, the complete propulsion is provided by an electric motor. In parallel hybrids, propulsion is provided by the combination of internal combustion and electric motor. So a typical control system for a propulsion motor is the one that is shown in this diagram. Here, the DC power from the battery is supplied to the inverter. The inverter converts the DC to variable frequency and variable voltage AC to provide the power to the propulsion motor to achieve the required torque and speed to drive the vehicle. In the all EVs and HEVs, there is generally a propulsion system controller which generates the acceleration signal, brake signal, and speed signal based on the driver commands. These signals are converted to the corresponding speed and torque commands for the motor. Now, the torque of the motor is controlled using vector control or field orientation control systems. In the early electric vehicles, the strict frequency control was predominantly used, including in the early versions of GM EV1 electric vehicle. 
The pulse width modulation strategy is either sinusoidal PWM or space vector PWM. But these days, space vector PWM is the trend. There are several types of uh, vector controllers like direct or indirect control scheme, rotor flex orientation, straight flex orientation, etc. So, this diagram shows a propulsion motor control system with a vector control. Here, the system controller conveys the torque command to motor controller via channel interface. So, in the example shown here, the direct axis and quadrature axis reference currents are derived from torque command, DC bus voltage, and motor speed. Each level of torque command at a given speed corresponds to a pair of IQ and ID reference values in the lookup table. In the, in the event bus voltage varies from nominal value, lookup table values also change. The reference values are compared with the actual D and Q currents obtained from measured currents and then from ABC to DQ transformation. The output of the controllers, that is these PI controllers, will set the right PWM signals to control the inverter and motor to achieve the desired response. The position information of the motor is derived from the speed encoder. So, if instead of an induction motor that is shown here, if a permanent magnet motor is used, an absolute position encoder is required. So, this diagram is a typical power conversion system showing the DC-DC converter, the power conversion system, that is the power inverter, the motor and rest of all the electronics. Companies are trying to integrate as much as possible into one unit. For example, in this diagram, Mitsubishi Electric is trying to put a DC-DC converter, an inverter, the J drivers, and the associated electronics and the protection circuit into one unit that can be used in hybrid vehicles or even in the electric vehicles. These automotive power electronics are unique. They have to stand in the hostile environment, that is minus 40 to 125 degree operating temperature, high vibration and shock. They have to stand the chemical corrosion, oil spills, leaks from the gasoline leaks or salt and also the, the packaging requirements are chassis, engine, transmission, they all have to be mounted and also they have to have a crashworthiness, serviceability, assembly line installation and power density which I mentioned earlier has to be greater than 10 kilowatt per liter or it should be even 10 kilowatt per kg and it is usually liquid cooled and the cost has to be lower, $7 per kilowatt, that is the Freedom Car goal that was the target set by the Department of Energy. So what sets automotive power electronics apart from commercial electronics? First. The underwood environment is a very hostile place. The components have to withstand the extreme temperatures, road vibration, shock, water, salt, oil, gas, and chemical intrusion that a commercial unit would never see. Then there are the unique packaging requirements. The designer usually has to put the power electronics in the leftover corner of the engine bay. And by the way, it has to meet crashworthiness, serviceability criteria, and several other environmental conditions. Since these components are often installed on regular assembly lines, they must be put into place in a matter of seconds. The lack of space in a modern vehicle drives the requirements for high power density and low weight. So weight is critical on a vehicle. Almost all automotive power electronics today are liquid cooled versus air cooled for most industrial electronics. And while today's power electronics are on a low temperature coolant loop, tomorrow's components will share the high temperature that is of 105 degrees Celsius that is used for the engine coolant as to be used for the same temperature for the water glycol thermal system with the engine. Finally, cost is the ban for all designers. 
the expectations are that the cost will go down as the technology matures and competitiveness increases. Cost targets for OEMs are extremely aggressive. This puts down pressure on tier 1 suppliers to improve manufacturing costs and leverage other business. So this diagram gives an idea about the architecture that is being used in all Toyota hybrid vehicles, whether it is Lexus or hybrid Camry or Prius, the architecture is more or less similar. What is different? The battery voltages are different. The power is different. And also the, the total power that is for the electric motor is different. The DC DC converter power can be different. The inverter power can be different. They are all different, but the basic architecture is same. In this diagram, you can see that uh, this is for Lexus. The 288 volts battery voltage is boosted to 650 volts DC on one side. On the other side, an engine which drives the generator combined together are providing AC voltage and that AC voltage from the generator is converted to 650 volts DC again. So the power from the battery and the power from the generator driven by the engine are combined together in the DC link. That power is converted into AC using the motor inverter and then provide the propulsion power that is required for the vehicle by providing the power to the propulsion motor. This is the unit from Semicron. Semicron is very well known for manufacture of power devices, power modules for various applications. Now they are building a hybrid power inverter unit that can be used for hybrid vehicles also. This unit is this unit that is shown here is a 200 kVA DC to AC converter operating from 750 volts DC. It is liquid cold and you can cool up to 10 liters per minute with liquid and it weighs about 15 kilogram and there's a volume of 12.6 liters that comes to about 13.6 kilowatt per, per kilogram and 15.9 kilowatt per liter. So that is pretty dense power electronic system. Over the years, power electronics technology has advanced to a great extent. So this shows an inverter from General Motors in 1996 for an electric vehicle that has a power density of 4.8 kilowatt per kg. So as the technology has advanced, by 2007, the same functionality inverter is 26 kilowatt per kg. That is nearly five times higher power density, higher power density than it was in 1996. Even the volume density has improved significantly from 3 kilowatt per liter in 1996 to 24 kilowatt per liter in 2007. That is eight times higher in volume density. This diagram shows the architecture of a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. There is a high voltage DC bus. That high voltage DC bus is fed from a battery and a DC DC converter. So that means the battery doesn't have to be at the same voltage as the DC link voltage. The DC bus also gets the voltage from the generator driven from the engine that is inside that hybrid drive unit. So the power from the battery and the hybrid drive unit are combined on the DC link. On the right hand side, you can see that the DC voltage is converted to another DC voltage that is using a DC DC converter that is required for air conditioning, the X by wire system, X by wire means throttle by wire, steer by wire, roll by wire and all these functions together are called X by wire systems. And also 
we need the power for other accessory loads. That the high voltage DC is also used for charging the 12 volts battery inside the vehicle. So that is the 14 volts power net that consists of 12 volts battery and all the other 12 volts loads. And also on the right hand side, there is a charger that is used for charging the battery. So that makes it as a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. So from the phone network or from a parking lot, you can convert the AC to DC and then the same DC can be used for charging the battery. It is also possible that we can charge the battery directly instead of going through the high voltage DC link. On the top left hand side is the mobile power unit. Suppose you need 230 volts or 50 hertz or 120 volts or 60 hertz inside a vehicle so that you can connect a refrigerator or a microwave oven for some purpose. You can get that power using this DC to AC converter that is the mobile power system. Now let us talk about the fuel cell vehicles and power electronics for fuel cell vehicles. In this architecture of the fuel cell vehicle propulsion system, the reformer is on board the vehicle and integrated into the fuel cell system. What is a reformer? A reformer generates hydrogen from fuel like gasoline and methanol. The fuel cell stack output is the variable DC and is converted to a required AC for driving the motor using a DC-DC converter and an inverter. So depending on the fuel cell voltage and the inverter input voltage, the DC-DC converter operates either in bulk or in boost mode. The rest of the power electronics control is similar to hybrid vehicles. At present, most of the fuel cell vehicles are based on direct hydrogen. That is, pressurized hydrogen or liquid hydrogen stored on board the vehicle. So hydrogen is supplied to this to the fuel cells as the number one here shown in this diagram. And in addition to hydrogen, we also need oxygen for the fuel cell to operate. So that is derived from the air supplied to the fuel cells by the air compressor. Oxygen from the air is combined with the hydrogen in the fuel cell to generate electricity which is sent to the traction inverter module. The, the traction inverter converts the DC to variable frequency variable voltage AC to drive the electric motor to provide the propulsion power for the vehicle. And also there is an exhaust at the output of the fuel cell. That exhaust is mainly the water vapor droplets. So there, is, there are no emissions in a direct hydrogen based vehicle. That is that if hydrogen is stored on board the vehicle, only emissions are, are the exhaust system or the water vapor. This is another diagram that is the fuel cell hybrid configuration. Generally in fuel cell vehicle, the fuel cell power is combined with the battery power to provide the required propulsion. So as in a series hybrid vehicle, the electric motor drives the vehicle. Depending on the road conditions and the driver commands, it is possible that the battery alone or fuel cell alone or fuel cell and battery combined together supply the power to the propulsion motor. So it can, be a range, it can be a range extender type series hybrid fuel cell vehicle or a full series hybrid vehicle with fuel cell and battery sharing the required propulsion power. This diagram shows how the fuel cell and the battery are connected in a practical vehicle. So you can also connect it in such a way that the battery doesn't have to be designed to be at the same voltage as the fuel cell voltage. So you can have a DC-DC converter between the battery voltage and the DC link voltage that is connected to the fuel cell system. And the DC voltage is again converted to AC using the propulsion inverter. 
the diode at the output of the fuel cell for preventing any current going into the fuel cell because the fuel cell system cannot take the negative currents. The rest of the systems are similar to the hybrid vehicle, mainly hybrid vehicle systems, yeah, like system controller and the jet drives and the motor controller, they are all part of similar to what is used in hybrid vehicles. This gives an idea about how a real fuel cell vehicle operates. This is a Toyota fuel cell vehicle. This paper was actually presented in 2002. Under low power mode, the battery provides the power for the propulsion. The fuel cell is not providing any power. Under medium power mode, the fuel cell provides the full propulsion power and also fuel cell charges the battery. Under high power mode, that is when you want to pass a vehicle or you have to climb the hill or when you really need very high power, at that time the propulsion power is provided both by the battery and the fuel cell. Under regeneration mode, the power is fed back into the battery, that way the battery gets charged and you can have more range in a pure electric mode from the battery if it is done regenerative charging. If we have an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle or a fuel cell vehicle as shown here, it can be used as a power source. The DC power can be converted into AC, then it is connected to the home power. This is called V to G power, that is vehicle to grid power. In this situation, we have to make sure that the electric vehicle charging must be optimized for grid load while guaranteeing that driver schedules and range requirements are met. As you can see that power electronics plays a major role here and without power electronics, we cannot achieve this operation. So now let us look at the propulsion system control issues. This is applicable for electric, hybrid or fuel cell vehicles, although my focus here is more on the fuel cell vehicle. So what is the system DC voltage and what should be the optimum DC volt voltage with and without a DC-DC converter? Rate of increase of the output power of the fuel cell stack means how fast you can increase the output power. For example, if you demand 0 to 100 percent load instantaneously, then the fuel cell will not be able to provide because there is no fuel inside the fuel cell stack to provide that power. Shutting off the entire system. How do you shut off the entire system? For example, if you, if you shut off the entire system, there may be still fuel flowing inside the fuel cell stack, then what do you do with it? Coordination between subsystems for optimum operation. Supplying the power to the accessory loads of the vehicle and to the accessory loads of the fuel cell stack, that is the balance of plant. How do you provide the power for the balance of plant? In some cases, it may take as high as 10% of the fuel cell power itself. Matching the fuel cell output characteristics with the characteristics of the battery and the drive system. Then the sensors for fuel flow measurement, temperature and pressure regulation, and for sensing the various chemical reactions in the fuel cell unit. The another important thing we need to do while designing the entire system is the electromagnetic interference and noise in the electrical signal must be taken care of. And the ground earth, grounding, and ground faults. Leakage current limitations to meet the safety requirements. Isolation of the fuel cell stack from the drive system. Is it necessary? In some cases, it may be necessary to isolate the fuel cell stack. In some other cases, it is not necessary. Connecting the battery and the fuel cell stack together. Charging the capacitors of the inverter and what technology the capacitors are suitable for a given vehicle application. When you charge the capacitor in Capacitors, you need to make sure that there is no instantaneous rise in the current. The current can shoot up and blow some of the devices. 
So the capacitors have to be charged gradually, maybe using an RC network or some other method. Emergency, emergency shutoff of the pole system. The effect on the fuel input if the load is suddenly disconnected, which I already mentioned. And the amount of regeneration allowed. The amount of regeneration allowed depends on the state of charge of the batteries. So regeneration is the process of feeding the kinetic energy in the motor to the battery. This extends the range of the batteries and assists the mechanical brakes. If the battery is fully charged, then you will not be able to um, put the energy back into the batteries. So far, we have seen how the power electronics have been used in electric, hybrid and fuel cell vehicles. So we understood the importance of power electronics and what are the different power conversion topologies and how the power converter is connected to the motor and the generator. Now, let us look at some of the review questions. Draw the diagram of the power conversion architecture in Toyota hybrid vehicles. I have explained this architecture a few slides ago. It consists of a battery. The battery voltage is boosted to a high voltage. In Prius it is 500 volts and in Camry it is 650 volts DC. So there is a bug boost converter between the battery and the DC link. Then there is an inverter which converts DC to variable frequency, variable voltage AC to provide the power for the propulsion motor. And then there is a, another converter which converts the generator output to DC. So basically there are three power stages. The bug boost converter, an inverter for propulsion and a converter for rectifying the generator output voltage to high voltage DC. Second question is, what is the purpose of DC-DC converters? in electric vehicle, hybrid electric vehicle and fuel cell vehicles. In electric vehicle, the main purpose of the DC-DC converter is to convert the high voltage that is say about 300 volts to 12 volts DC because this 12 volts is required for powering all the accessory loads. In hybrid electric vehicles, there can be more than one DC-DC converter, there can be at least two DC-DC converters, one for getting the 12 volts like in the electric vehicles that is from high voltage to low voltage and the other one is to charge the propulsion battery that is like in Toyota Prius we take the high voltage and convert into battery voltage to charge the batteries. Same thing in the other side is take the battery voltage and boost it to higher voltage and that voltage is used for propulsion. In fuel cell vehicles, we use DC-DC converter to match the battery voltage with the fuel cell uh, DC output voltage. And also you need a, another 12 volts uh, DC to Z, DC converter in fuel cell vehicles because you need to convert the high voltage fuel cell voltage to 12 volts. What is vehicle to grid operation? We have several types of power sources in the vehicle or it can be only one power source like battery. The battery voltage or if, there is, if it is a fuel cell vehicle, you combine the fuel cell and battery voltage. We convert it into AC and that AC is connected to the grid in your house or in the neighborhood. So basically an electric vehicle supplies the electric power to home network or to a microgrid. And when the vehicle has to be charged, the same converter which is used for uh, converting the battery voltage to AC can also be used for charging the batteries. That is from the grid, you can 
charge the batteries using the power converter. So vehicle is connected to grid and the grid is used for charging the batteries and when uh, the power has to be supplied from the vehicle to the grid, you convert the DC voltage of the battery to AC. So it is a two-way power flow. So that is vehicle to grid operation. Uh, and also, I want to show you again the slide on the references. I have borrowed most of the materials so far I have presented from these references. This consists of books, papers, some important internet websites and also some patents. Thank you.